In today's video, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of the math no calculator section of SAT practice test 10. I've scored perfectly on back-to-back -back SAT math sections, and as I go through this section, I'm gonna show you the most efficient way to answer each and every question. So if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe, and let's go ahead and get started. So first we got question one. What value of z satisfies the equation above? So to solve this, I'm gonna go ahead and subtract two z from each side, thus leaving me with negative z is equal to positive one. Therefore, z is gonna equal negative one and my answer is gonna be b. All right, let's go ahead and move on to number two then. A television with a price of $300 is to be purchased with an initial payment of $60 and weekly payments of $30. Which of the following equations can be used to find the number of weekly payments W required to complete the purchase assuming there are no taxes or fees? Well, we know that our total price is gonna be $300. We know that we also put in an initial payment of $60. So that'll be plus 60. And we know we're paying $30 per week which can be represented as 30W. So our equation is gonna be 300 equals 30W plus 60. So our answer is gonna be C. All right, moving on to number three now. So we've got a table, it says shipping charges. So we have the table above shows shipping charges for an online retailer that sells sporting goods. There is a linear relationship between the shipping charge and the weight of the merchandise. Which function can be used to determine the total shipping charge, F of X, in dollars for an order with a merchandise weight of X pounds? All right, well, we see that we've got a linear change. Now, I see as I go from 5 to 10 that I'm increasing by right around $5, okay? So right around $5, but I have to keep in mind that my weight is increasing by 5 as well. So as I go up 1 pound, I'm going up by about $1, okay? So my slope here should be about 0.99x. So I can go ahead and get rid of C, and I can get rid of D as well. Next thing I need to look at is my intercept. If I go back 5 pounds to 0 pounds, I see I go back about $5 approximately, and I'd be right around 11.99. So my answer here is gonna be answer choice B, okay? You don't have to use exact numbers here. If you estimate, you're gonna be able to get to the correct answer really quick for three, and everything will be fine. So three, our answer there is gonna be B. All right, moving on to number four. We've got the line in the xy plane above represents the relationship between the height h of x in feet and the base diameter x in feet for cylindrical Doric columns in ancient Greek architecture. How much greater is the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of five feet than the height of a Doric column that has a base diameter of two feet? So keep in mind, we have to subtract that height at two feet from that height at five feet. So we see our height at five feet is gonna be 35 and our height at two feet is gonna be 14. So we're gonna do 35 minus 14, and that's gonna leave us with 21 as our answer. So our answer here is gonna be C. All right, moving on to number five. If X is greater than zero, which just means that X is gonna be positive, which of the following is equivalent to the given expression? All right, well, I see I have the square root with nine right there, so I can go ahead and take three out from that square root, and then I have the square root of X squared, which means I can go ahead and take X out as well, so my answer here is gonna be A. All right, moving on to number six now. It says, what are all the values of x that satisfy the equation above? So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply each side by x minus one to go ahead and cancel that denominator. So we'll go ahead and do that. We gotta distribute our negative two to our x as well as to our negative one. When we do that, we're gonna end up with x squared minus one on our left side is equal to negative two x plus two on our right side. Now we wanna set this all equal to zero. So we're gonna go ahead and add two x to each side. And then we're also gonna subtract two from each side. When we do that, we're gonna be left with zero is equal to x squared plus two x and then minus three. So from here, we can go ahead and factor. So we're gonna have x minus three, or I'm sorry, x plus three times x minus one. All right, from here, we can go ahead and solve for our potential answers. We're gonna have x equals negative three and then also x is equal to positive one. All right, from here, we're gonna go ahead and check this with our original equation here. If we were to plug in one, we would have one minus one, which would give us a denominator of zero which we know will not equal negative two, it would equal zero. Therefore, we know that x equals one is not gonna be a correct solution. So we can go ahead and get rid of c. Next thing we look at is our potential answer of negative three. If we were to go ahead and plug in negative three, we'd have negative three squared. Negative three squared would end up giving us nine. We'd have nine minus one, which would give us eight. And then in our denominator, we would have negative three minus one, which would give us negative four. So we'd have eight over negative four, which we know is equal to negative two, which does in fact equal the negative two on our other side of that equation. Therefore, we know that negative three is our correct answer, so we will answer with A, which will be correct. All right, moving on to number seven. The graph of Y equals F of X is shown in the XY plane. What is the value of F of zero? All right, well, the value of F of zero is gonna be our Y intercept, okay? It's where X is zero. So we can go ahead and draw a line up, find our Y intercept, and we see that that's gonna be at four. So our answer is gonna be D. So number seven is pretty easy there, just finding that y-intercept at four. All right, moving on to number eight in the figure above, point B lies on AD. What is the value of three X? 
All right, key thing here is recognizing that we have a right angle right here where I'm putting in blue. And then we got to add all these x's together to get 5x. So we know then that 5x has to equal 90 degrees since a right angle has 90 degrees. From there, we can go ahead and divide each side by 5, divide each side by 5. We're going to end up getting that x is equal to 18. Is that our answer? No, it's not because we need the value of 3x. You always want to pay attention to what you're asked to answer with. Otherwise, you're going to answer incorrectly. So to get the value of 3x, we're going to multiply 3 by 18, and we're going to end up getting... 54. So our answer is going to be C. All right, taking a look at number nine now, it says which of the following is an equation of line L in the xy plane above? We see that we've got that y intercept at negative four and we have a negative slope of a negative one. So slope is going to be negative one and then y intercept is going to be negative four. All right, so let's go ahead and find an answer that matches that. We see that these answer choices aren't in slope intercept form, but if we take a look, I'm going to look for where I've got a negative 4 and also a positive y because that's telling me that I've got my y intercept at negative 4, and then I also see that I have x, which when I subtract x from each side will give me that slope of negative 1. Okay, so my answer here is going to be C. As you can see, if you were to go do this with A, you would have a positive slope because you'd subtract x from each side. And then you'd have to flip the sign when you make y positive, giving you a positive slope. So you could go ahead and determine that a is wrong. With b, if you look at it, you're going to end up getting um, a negative y intercept because when you make y positive, you turn up with a negative 4. Um, and then as far as your slope, you'd end up with a positive slope because you'd have to subtract x from each side, but then you'd have to change its sign to get y positive again. And then if we take a look with d, you've got x plus y is equal to 4, which when you flip your y to a... Um, or I'm sorry, which you will end up having the wrong y-intercept because you don't have to flip anything with your y, therefore you'd end up with a positive 4 as your y-intercept, therefore you'd know d is wrong. But once you recognize that c is the right answer, you don't have to check and make sure everything else is wrong. I'm just doing that to show you how you can make sure that you have the right answer, or if you just have extra time at the end and you wanted to check your work, that's how you'd be able to check it. All right, number 10, the graph of y equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 12 is shown. If the graph crosses the y-axis at the point 0k, what is the value of k? All right, well, what we know is if we're crossing at the point 0k, that means that x is 0. So let's go ahead and plug in 0 here. That'll give us 0, plug in a 0 there, 0, and then we'll have plus 12, which means that k is going to equal 12. So our answer there is going to be d. So that one right there is not too bad at all. Next up, we've got a circle, and the xy plane has center 5, 7, and radius 2. What should the following is an equation of the circle? Well, we know that it's going to equal our radius squared, right? So our radius is 2. 2 squared is going to give us 4. Therefore, we can get rid of c and d. Next thing, we know that our center has that x coordinate of 5, which means we have to have x minus 5 squared. And our y coordinate is 7 for our center, which means we have to have y minus 7 squared. So our answer here will be A. B is incorrect because it has the wrong sign here and here. All right, number 12 now. Looks like we have similar triangles. It says in the figure above, triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. What's the value of cosine E? Well, we know that cosine E is going to be the same value as cosine B since they're similar triangles. So we can go ahead and find that. We know cosine is going to be our adjacent over our hypotenuse. We see the adjacent to B is going to be 12, and then our hypotenuse will be 13. Therefore, our answer is going to be 12 over 13, our adjacent over our hypotenuse. So 12 over 13 will be answer choice B. All right, moving on to number 13 now. we got three more multiple choice. We've got in the xy plane, the graph of the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 4 has two x-intercepts. What is the distance between them? Well, we can go ahead and factor out f of x, so we'll go ahead and do that. We see that that's going to end up giving us x plus 4 and then also x plus 1. So, therefore, our two zeros or our two x-intercepts are going to be at negative 4 and then also at negative 1. We know that the distance between negative 4 and negative 1 is a distance of 3, so our answer there is going to be C. All right, let's go ahead and solve 14. So what are all the values of x that satisfy the given equation? So if we take a look at option 1, plugging 1 in, we would get 4 times 1, which would give us square root 4, which would be 2. And then we'd have 2 is equal to 1 minus 3, which is incorrect because 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 2. 2 does not equal negative 2, therefore 1 is incorrect. So I'm going to put an F for false. All right, looking at number 2, which is 9, we'd have square root of 4 times 9, which we know is going to give us the square root of 36, which we know will equal 6. And then looking at 9 minus 3, we see that 9 minus 3 is also equal to 6, therefore our answer is 2 only. So our answer there is going to be B. All right, number 15. In the system of equations above, A is a constant. For which of the following values of A does the system have no solution? Well, it's going to have no solution where that's the same slope but different y-intercepts, as you can see in this graph here. We need same slope, different y-intercepts. So we see that we've got a 6 here and a 4 here. So we're probably going to end up having y-intercepts. We'll be able to check that at the end, but we also need to have the same slope. So to have the same slope, we need to have the same ratio of our x to our y, and also we have to have that same sign. So we see we have negative 3x 
to y, to 1y, and then down here we've got 2y, right? So we just got to double that negative 3 then to get negative 6. So the value of a is going to have to be negative 6. And then just to make sure that we are going to end up having no solution, we can also go ahead and just check with our intercepts. We would have um, a y equals 3x plus 6, if we're going to write that in slope-intercept form. And then over here, we would end up having a 2y equals positive 6x, and then it'd be a plus 4. And then keep in mind, we just divide that all by 2, so we get y equals positive 3x, and then plus 2. So as we can see, we are going to have no solution there. All right, so moving on to number 16 now. All right, so we've got a manufacturer shipped units of a certain product to two locations. The equation above shows the total shipping cost, T in dollars, for shipping C units to the closer location and shipping F units to the farther location. If the total shipping cost was 47,000 and 3,000 units were shipped to the farther location, how many units were shipped to the closer location? All right, well, we can go ahead and write out our total cost. That's going to be $40,000, $47,000. Set that equal to 5C. We know that 3,000 units were shipped to the farther location, so that's going to be plus 12 times 3,000. And then from there, we can just go ahead and use this equation to solve for C. So 12 times 3,000 we know is going to give us 36,000. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 36,000 from each side. Subtract 36,000 from each side. That's going to leave me with 11,000 is equal to 5C. From there, I can go ahead and divide each side by 5. I know that to get 5,000, I would have to multiply 5 by 1,000, and to get to 10,000, I would have to multiply 5 by 2,000, and then to get to, so I'm going to have 2,000, right, of the smaller um, shipping, shipping boxes, and then I'm also going to have to have another $1,000 worth, which we know, since it's divided by 5, will be 200. So it would be 2,000 plus 200, giving us 2,000 and 200 as our answer. So our final answer here is going to be 2,200 are the number of units shipped to the closer location. All right, moving on to number 17. Right here we're dealing with some absolute values. So we have A and B are solutions to the equation above. What's the value of absolute value of A minus B? All right, so key thing here is we're just going to have to set this equal to negative 5 as well, and then we can just go through and solve. All right, so first up we'll do negative 5. So negative 5 is equal to 2x plus 1. We can go ahead and subtract 1 from each side so we can start isolating x. That's going to give us negative 6 is equal to 2x. From there, we divide each side by 2 to solve for x, and we see that x is going to equal negative 3. Next, we go ahead and set it equal to positive 5. So we're going to have 2x plus 1 is equal to positive 5. From there, we go ahead and subtract 1 from each side again, thus giving us 2x equals 4. Therefore, x has to equal 2. So we know that x is going to equal negative 3, and then x is also going to equal 2. As far as which one we assign as A and which one we assign as B, it won't matter. In this case, we'll just assign negative 3 as A. So we'll have absolute value of negative 3 minus 2, and that is going to give us absolute value of negative 5, which we know will just equal 5. So our answer is going to be 5. All right, moving on to number 18, I believe. We've got Juan purchased an antique that had a value of $200 at the time of purchase. Each year, the value of the antique is estimated to increase 10% over its value of the previous year. The estimated value of the antique in dollars two years after the purchase can be represented by the expression 200A, where A is a constant. What's the value of A? All right, so keep in mind here, since we're increasing 10% over our value the previous year, we can write that as increasing by 1.1 squared, okay, since we're doing this for two years. So we're increasing by 10% each year, which is what gives us this 1.1. We'd multiply that by our original value, which is 200. But keep in mind, we have to do this for two years, so we would have to multiply it by 1.1 again for a second year. So you could also write that as 1.1 squared. So all we got to do is solve for 1.1 squared then, since all we need is A. So we just do 1.1 times 1.1. So we'll go ahead and do that. We see that we're going to get 11, drop a 0, and then we go ahead and do it again. We get an 11, and we're going to end up with 1.21. So our value is going to be 1.21 as the value of A. Keep in mind, we only have to solve for the value of A there, not the final value. All right, moving on to number 19. 19, I'm going to show you a trick you can use to solve this one really quickly. We can see that we're asked for the value of 5x plus 5y. All we got to do is add these two together. So anytime that you're asked a question and you see that you have stacked equations like you do up top here, always be looking to add or subtract in order to get to your answer the fastest. In this case, by adding these two uh, equations together, we're going to end up with 5x plus 5y is equal to, and then we just add 1,200 to 1,300, and that's going to give us 2,500. So our answer is going to be 2,500. All right, moving on to number 20. 
This one right here is important because you want to recognize the difference of perfect squares. We have if u plus t equals 5 and u minus t equals 2, what is the value of u minus t times the quantity u squared minus t squared? You need to understand here that u squared minus t squared is the same as u minus t times u plus t. Okay, that's what's going to allow you to solve this question super quickly. Once you recognize that, you see that u plus t is equal to 5, you see u minus t is equal to 2, therefore you're going to have 2 times 5, which will give you 10. Is that your final answer? No, because you still have to take into account that other u minus t, which you know u minus t is 2, so it'll be 10 times 2, which means your final answer is going to be 20. So hopefully this video is helpful. If it was, make sure to like and subscribe. In addition to that, if you have any video requests, be sure to leave them in the comments. And if you're gaining value from my channel and from my content, please consider donating. It helps me be able to continue to put out these videos for free. In addition to that, if you're looking for private SAT tutoring, college essay editing, or college admissions consulting, be sure to check out my website. The link is in the description. 